All right. Hey guys, we are live with Sean and Javi from Form Life. And uh, today uh, we're going to go over some custom training, how to build your own custom GPTs, uh, AIs, embed them inside the contact view and give your users sort of like a custom branded experience for their situation, right? You know, if you're a realtor, if you're, um, you know, lead objection handling, things like that, and have it just automatically give your users what to say or what to do. So uh, with that, I'm going to give it over to Javi. Uh, he's going to share a screen and give us some examples of what people have been doing and uh, all that. Yeah, absolutely, Tom. And yeah, thanks so much for having us. Um, had a ton of people in, in our community ask us to do this training with you. Um, of course, you know, people aren't familiar with the customizer, extremely powerful tool uh, to customize your GHL SAS. Um, when you combine it with Formize, of course, uh, you really can take things to the next level. And I'm really excited to share uh, this specific use case. This is actually a use case I came across by somebody that was already um, using the customizer. So actually one of our users pioneered it and then I kind of almost oh, okay. ran with it and I've been wanting to get a formal training for our community on this. Um, and really it does come down to uh, this specific use case to operationalizing these uh, prompts and this AI inside of the slow accounts. By now, everybody's very familiar with like AI bots and, and conversational AI. That's like a very low hanging fruit. Um, a thing we're kind of pioneering here is adding those custom AI tools um, when and where your end users in your sub accounts need them. So as you can see, guys, I have a go high level account pulled up here. Uh, it's it's uh, our white label lead dragon, and I have a custom contact here pulled up. And I'm going to show you how cool uh, Tom's uh, iframe and what do you call this feature, Tom? I don't want to confuse people that go in the customizer. Is this one called the contact? The contact button. Contact button, yeah. Yep, the contact button. So when you click on here, I have a formized tool that is automatically uh, iframed, and it's and it's going to pop up in the pop up, and we have a custom URL parameter inside of the customizer, which we'll go in deeper here in just a second. That is pulling in the first name. Now we're working on it right now, currently, where we can pull in other things like custom fields, custom values and cool things like that. Uh, for the time being, this is just an example of a quick tool that that we built and we've managed to iframe to sort of give, um, again, that added AI assistance to the end user in the sub account. In this case, this is just gonna create any email or SMS that I want um, if, if, you know, if I needed one, for example, similar to the review AI native AI, uh, AI feature that, that GHO has, but of course, infinitely more customizable because it is built on Formwise and I can control the prompt, I can control the engine, I can add data, and very soon it'll also be able to scrape the internet. So um, yeah, without further ado, uh, Tom, you want us to go ahead and jump in the training or? or yeah, I wanted to point out one other thing that, that, that uh, I was talking to you before this where, um, and I'm gonna share my screen now, mm -hmm. uh, where we were talking about how we could actually put tool tips and put them in a drop down, so you could have a whole bunch of different contexts, mm -hmm. right? So you could be like um, leads expressed interest and, and give them all the scenarios. Um, so it would be just one click; it would pop up, prefill the context and the the context name, and then they just hit generate. Um, and... So basically, sales AI tools for every single stage of the buying cycle or of the yeah. sales. Exactly. And it's just all built in right there. Then they have a little drop down. It's almost like message templates, but like message AI templates sort of built in there. Yeah. yeah. Hey, 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 and Javi, let me add before we jump in here. I've already tested this on sales calls, by the way, because I do all of our sales and demos and I've used this actual tool in front of a few potential clients. And they were not only blown away, Javi, from our AI tool suite at the bottom left, but the actual functionality of being able to be in there and do like that which we've already shown today it's mm -hmm. already it's already winning people over if you will tom so i've already put that out to the to the public Into, if you will yeah. to show them that yeah i love yeah, that. i mean sean sean is our beta tester um you know sean's you know in a lot of ways <laughs> um and you know he i i i will build tools he'll throw them out there in the wild on discovery calls on demo calls and and the thing i love about these tools too sean is 
that tool I just shared with everybody is actually yeah. just a very broad tool. It's just pulling the person's first name and then creating my and then creating a custom SMS or email. People can actually create brand specific tools in iframe them, like for the sub account that yeah. all brand boys, you know, are you know, have a pricing catalog attached to the tool. Um, so you can really make a bespoke sub account. And when when I think of really customized things like that, I think of you know, I think of retention, I think of stickiness, and I think of activation. Because if someone has a tool in here that, let's just say it's a sales objection tool, which that's what we're going to build here in just a second. Um, and somebody, let me go to, let me go back to yours, Sean, here in just a second. Let me find you in here. Yeah, let me go to Sean here. And let's just say Sean, Sean responded with an objection. I can have an objection, um, you know, overcomer tool or something like that that could generate something on the fly that's not just hallucinating from what OpenAI is trained on, but is actually trained on my brand voice. And maybe I have a FAQ of objections. So it's a great sales tool. It's a great. I think he's breaking Here's up. Bigger. So why he's coming uh, back. <laughs> so let me add to that real quick while his is catching up his sound. Is that on the sales side of things, you know, one of the biggest things in high level is trying to differentiate yourself, right? Because there's over 60,000 agencies. Well, here you go. So all the things that you can put together and you put Tom Schull and Formos together inside, you definitely differentiate, differentiate yourself. All these sales calls I've had over the past two weeks were showing them the AI tools, and even this button that can be added in there as well. That's, that's huge because it's going to keep them in your, on your high level even longer. And that's the whole point. Just like Facebook wants you to stay on their platform, high level as all of us, we want them to stay on our platforms as well. And this is just going to add to it. Yeah. And Sean, I want to make the point uh, for people that may not know. Uh, can you tell them a little bit about Lead Dragon? Because Lead Dragon is a killer SaaS built yep. on top of GHL. Yes. And it's it's like it, they've won the awards and all the things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, they know I'll, how to differentiate and sell this. Yeah, I'll give you I'll give you the, just a quick two-minute version. Okay, so we started back at Holiday in 2019 and no, I think it was in November and really for that first year, Tom, we used, uh, really used it for fulfillment in our marketing agency, right? Because we didn't know what we had. We, were, we loved the fact that we could text our clients and tell them they had a lead and here's their lead, all that. So it took us about a year. We woke up one day and I, I come to probably years like, man, we could really sell this. Like, let's go for these sub accounts. So we sit down, and we, we, we chose our brand, you know, Lead Dragon. I grew up watching Bruce Lee movies, so he's got all those dragon movies. So, and then you know lead the word lead speaks for itself so lead dragon so we took that and really tom within that first year you know our story is that we went from 90 percent agency to 90 percent SaaS in one year so once we fired that and we get that first award and then you know just like you said we won the one last year awards are great but we love where we're going directionally with uh high level because lead dragon has served us well it's gotten to this point we've continued to grow with that we've added services for it and that's why tools like your song and our formize adding on top of these things makes it to where these other agencies can't repeat what we're doing. So even if they talk to me today, like literally phone, they can go to another agency and they're not going to give them have the same thing. We have a system and we have the AI tools and the builders and, and create these tools for them in place that nobody else can mess with. Right. So having that package really set, can set your stuff aside. So like how was saying, is that just being able to retain people is one added value. But really, in my opinion, with where we're going with form wise, is to be able to have these different tools that can be created for us internally for your high level or operationally. Like Javier probably might show you some up today, but operationally, he's got tools in the background for our agency that makes us more efficient. Like it keeps, because if I get into uh, the digital stuff, I mess it up because I'm not digital. So Javier and them are like, yep. Sean, stay out of it. So he's made these tools that helps him and our team to move faster as well. And he can talk yeah. about that. I want to make a huge point on that, right? Like the key to scaling is creating SOPs and giving people just a, a link and say, hey, go to chat GPT is not using an SOP, right? Yeah. This lets you build the workflows for your individual clients or type of client 
in a way that gives them a repeatable SOP that they can then give to their users, like their users, right? Their clients mm-hmm. or whoever's using their system to actually expand and just go through. And, and then you know that they're doing it correctly. Mm-hmm. And so, at the end, towards the end, I'm sure Javier can't share everything, but at the end, we can kind of give you a little uh, map of the future, so to speak, of what it's going to be able to do too, because with us being deep into high level, we want to make sure, I mean, this is not just for high levelers. You know that, Tom. It's for, what do you, what do you call it, Javier? Yeah, it's platform agnostic. Platform agnostic. Yeah. 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 So we, can, we work with all the other ones out there, so the online coaches, online course creators, freelancers, some local governments. We've got the University of, University of Alaska using our tool um, and other things like that. But, but even on the high level side, we want to make sure, and this is why we're working with you, Tom, because we want to make sure that we can add more things that can be added into high level with just filling out a form, right, Hobby? Yeah. They yeah. build a tool, fill out the form, and then populate, boom. That's the goal of everybody in the agency. I, I know that it is. They think they want to mash a button, build everything, right? And then you can get more business. So there'll be versions of that over time. I love it. Well, cool. Carry on. Why don't you show show us where? Yeah, no, no. Yeah. I'm excited for the future because, again, I think we're operationalizing ChatGPT. And I love the way you put it, Tom. SOPs matter so much to scaling. It does. And, 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 And that's exactly what these tools can do with that prompt chaining effect. So let's jump into FormWise. If you're not familiar with FormWise, this isn't a demo for FormWise. I'm just going to build a quick tool. I uh, invite you guys to check it out on our website. Um, so I'm going to build a quick tool here. Let's just do a sales objection like generator. Wow. Okay. And what this tool is going to do is it's going to be an assistant tool that I can just pull up when I'm in the conversation with a contact in GHL that can help me oh, overcome their objection, right? Something very simple. Um, if this is going to be a very simple tool. You could add more and more complexity to it in in your prompt instruction. Um, in this case, it's going to be very simple. So I'm going to put, um, what is the objection? And we're going to remove the placeholder text. We're going to update the question ID to objection. And I'm going to update the submit button to generate objection. And I'm literally just going to make a single field. I told you guys this was going to be super simple. It's just going to be simple. I'm not going to overcomplicate it. Next, I'm going to add my prompt. Please come up with the sales script to overcome this sales objection. Okay. I'm going to hit the at symbol, and I'm going to pull in that field from the front end that the end user would input. I'm going to name my prompt here. I'm just going to call it Objection AI. Now, I could add other fields to give this prompt more context, enrich it, like what's the product, or you know, or or make it sub account specific and just talk about the good things about my product, or even add a data source here if I had an FAQ um, of of all the potential frequently asked questions that someone could have about my service or product. In this case, I'm just going to rely on what OpenAI is trained on. I'm going to pick my engine. I have a number of uh, of a few engines here. I'm going to just pick GPT-4 to keep it simple. I'm going to move this Zoom thing out the way and hit save prompt. Okay. And you have extra data sources in there too. So you can add like FAQs and things like that in, in there as a... Mm-hmm. Yeah. PDFs, right. frameworks, cool stuff like that to kind of in, in, enhance the tool. Because we have to remember, OpenAI is trained on whatever, billions, trillions of parameters, uh, but it's not trained on that really edge edge data, edge information that only is known by, you know, by, by you, you, your business. Um, so we're going to um, make sure we have display results on. And this is important because we want to show the output upon submission. And this tool is ready. So we're going to, we can actually embed this tool anywhere. But for this scenario, this training, we want to embed it uh, and add it into the customizer. So we're just going to get that raw link. And we're going to jump into the customizer. And we're going to go into quick uh, contact buttons. And I already have one in here, so I'm going to click on this one. And all I need to do is, well, the cool thing here, Tom, if you want to kind of explain, we can, uh, yeah, uh, name so the let's button. Let's create a new one. Let's create a whole new one. Okay, let's create a whole um, new one. Cool. And uh, just add a button. And so what you can do with this is, obviously, you can tell it what you want there. 
Um, you can add a tool tip, which is great because otherwise people are not going to just, they're going to be like, is this going to like blow everything up if I uh, click it? <laughs> and oh, that's cool. I think that's Edge that does the autocomplete on the text field like that. Probably. Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, it is change, it. change the icon and color so it's not like horrible. Okay, let's do, uh, I like the bolt one. I always. Yeah, that's good. And then we'll keep that green to make it different from the other one. Okay, and great. And we'll want to then do. A link. And so this area has a whole training in it, in it uh, in itself. And a lot of times we'll link to a form, like a, a high level form, because then you can pass in the contact and things like that. But in this case, we're just going to have it open in a, a modal. We'll do the modal. Um, and we're not going to, don't, don't mess with any of that. Scroll back up to the top there. There we go. Um, and so at the end of, we're going to actually just be using merge tags. And so uh, can I control your screen for one second? Yeah, yeah sure, sure, sure. And uh, if you remember, Tom, in this tool, I don't, I didn't add any first name, last name, stuff like that. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. So if you were to do, uh, oh, I totally messed that up. Yeah, no got it. <laughs> so, so if you were to do, um, how can I get this? Go to the go to like the end of that, all the way to the right there. Oh, I got you. Give me one second. Let me. Yeah, you can get so... out of there. All right, right there. All, all right. right, yeah. So at the end there, if you were to pass in data, you put a question mark there, and then he could show you. There's a whole other bit where we talked about this, but inside of Formwise, they let you say, okay, you say first name or whatever the field is that you're passing. And then you would do a high level merge field of like bracket, bracket, contact, uh, first name, underscore, whatever. And that's where you would put all that. And high, uh, sorry, the customizer will merge in all the data from the contact um, and, and do that for you. You can also, if you click here, you can say through the URL and this will automatically add all the data from the contact. The only problem with doing that is that it may not match the exact thing that Formwise is looking for. So that's why, uh, in general, you would build it out. Yeah. 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 And if, you guys, if you guys wanted to, it would be amazing if you built a, like in your, in this area, when you go to uh, add it, you have all the data of like what you're, how you're supposed to pass it and stuff. Mm -hmm. You could just have like an extra thing of saying, generate contact link, or whatever. And then it could have it say contact. That's blah, a good blah, idea. Blah. And then they wouldn't have to manually build it all out, kind of like how we have it with the quick editor. Mm, that's a good idea. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll definitely pass that on to Justin. That's that's something I didn't think of. Um, that would be very intuitive, I think. And I can actually show them if 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 you, if, if you want to go ahead and save this tool, Tom. Yeah, perfect. I can so, show them the example and the other tool to to kind of uh, illustrate that for them. If you yeah, can, totally. If you click on the um, blue one. Do are we do is this it okay to hit publish yeah. or do we want yeah. to do pre preview? Uh, go ahead and publish it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Yeah, and then we can yeah refresh that. And uh, cool. So exactly what we were talking about. All right. So we got our two things here. We've got two different tooltips, and. Should pop up. I think high level still loading. Okay, there we go. Yeah, there's like a delay of communication there. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. And so you could like we what we were talking about is we could possibly pass in different contexts to automatically fill in that the different types of objections. And of course, I could add additional prompt instructions to keep the thing short, or you know, I could add um, you know, I could add the uh, variable to uh, to tell it to tell it to reply in the first name custom field variable. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, this one's super wordy. I should have actually told the prompt to tell it to yeah. get a little bit more brief. But that's the cool thing is that you're able to customize that. You know, I could add additional instructions here. I could I could add. This is something I learned the other day about prompting. If I add two asterisks, yeah, it'll actually make it bold, and the AI will actually pay more attention to it. Oh, cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah, and I really, really can't stress enough that building SOPs for your clients is huge for the users because 
they don't know what magic is behind these prompts, right? And they're not going to just go to, like, it adds too much confusion for them to go and type it in somewhere else. Because there is all these AIs available now, but the key is making it easy and put it into their workflows. So they just one click, they go, okay, good. They get a predictable result. They know it's going to be the way that it is. If you're a coach, it's going to be exactly what the coach is trying to teach you how to do, et cetera. Programs, because mm -hmm. they've been burnt in the and, past. Because it's tapping that too. Also too, when you build these tools, sometimes you may use that same tool for years. So it's yeah. build, it, build it once and let it ride on some of these. Yeah, exactly. Right, yeah, and then you can copy, and obviously that AI uh, response, super AI, but of course, if you're a prompt uh, engineer or, you know, I mean, it's really easy to get AI to get out of that um, AI cadence, um, yeah. you know, the way, but, but you know, this is just an example. Obviously, again, you give it rules, the AI will respond in that way, um, especially if you have data sources, it can really have your voice. Um, I actually have a email, a email replier tool that that I use because one of the things I don't like about in the morning is I have 20 emails I have to reply to, and that AI tool really helps out. Yeah, uh, I have one idea for you guys, which yeah. would be great in your editor or your builder. Um, is I just do not know how to. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. But anyway, in here you might already have this, but if you had, I've seen this with. Uh, couple other AI tools uh, like Jasper, where they give you like three or four dropdowns in building the prompt of like, you want a short response? Do you want it to like, for, for all the different things in it? And that just adds in your own proprietary addition to the prompt that makes it so that the response is in a particular format, like that you've already tested and, and done all the testing to make sure that like, if it's for an SMS, like you could say, is this for an SMS? Is this for an email? And you can have that as just a drop down in there. And mm. that will actually make this experience a little bit. No, more yeah. Faster. Yeah, a hundred percent. And the way I've seen people kind of do that right now mm -hmm. is if we go to the form, we can add like a, a, like a multiple, a multiple choice. Yeah. And do what type of communication. Yeah, there you go. And then we could do SMS, email, right? Yeah. And then we'll update the, this to communication. That way I know what it is when I map it. If I go into the prompt builder here, come up with a, and I'll just put that in there, email or SMS sales script. Oh, that's code. great. And then, and then that way it's dynamic. I mean, you don't have to update, update the link again once once it's been used. You will have to refresh GHL though, <laughs> at least once um, before, as so I can pull the latest iframe. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is just one example of the tool, how it can be used. Um, let me show them here. Uh, let me just show them the the um, what it looks like with the with the multiple choice. And you can turn off our branding, of course. You are able to really turn off the branding, um, so that is an option. And then if we jump into the customizer here, we go to the contact buttons. This is what we were talking about earlier, guys. This would be like an example of what that would look like. And all you need to do in FormWise, and let me go to this one in, inside of FormWise. This is a different tool. Um, inside of FormWise, all you have to do is ensure that your um, question matches what is being added in the URL parameter. So let me go into, I think it's, I think it's this one right here. So this part right here, cause we jump, this is from GHL. This is from the form right here, contact. So what we wanna do inside of FormWise is ensure that the question ID is contact. And that's, that's all you need to do. And then just build that parameter, um, and then it should autofill it if it's it being opened in the contact field. Um, it should automatically pull in that first name, um, you know, whether it's Sean or whoever that contact is. Of course, if that contact has a first name in that field, um, 
it'll for sure work. And in this case, in this tool we built here, um, there is no uh, custom field uh, for uh, this this first specific field. But again, if you were building a tool that had a lot of different contextual fields to do whatever it needs to do, build a proposal, um, come up with a a follow-up email that includes a joke or something like that, something personal from some personal custom field information you may have from them um, to make it more personal, then you would want to map that in the specific URL parameter. Um, yeah, and uh, Tom, I don't know if you want to show um, the Formize audience that may already be using the customizer other places where, or or I don't know if you have any examples of the folder um, iframe that, that you have on your end. Of, I of so there's a couple of different ways uh, and I need to log in to formwise myself um, and create one of these here. I had one all set up earlier. And if it takes too long, I went ahead and shared a tool. Yeah, if you could just send me a link of one of these yeah. links one of the the tools or even just one of the tool sets okay. then i'll show you how we can sort of add that in to something here here i just sent you two i sent you one's a tool and one's a tool set so. okay i love it okay so um let's just go through and build one of these real quick so if we come in here um i was going to show you you can do uh AI in the header. So we could be like uh, uh, AI tools and we'll make this sort of like purple and put a robot in here. And then we'll put that there and put it into a slider and we're going to make it show up. Um, so awesome. Let's say in the sites area, um, sites and membership, right? Because maybe that's where this tool is most accurate. So we'll hit publish here and we'll do a refresh. And now we'll go over to the sites area. Let's try this again. Did I break something? What happened here? Looks like betting someone removed it. Hold on. This is our test account yeah. and we have more and more people working with us. So I'm, I feel like, oh, it's great that I feel like someone removed the, yeah, that's what they did. They, they didn't remove it. They put in their own script above it, which then killed it. Um, all right, let's try this. This is what you're about to share. What it reminds me of a ton yeah. is the Microsoft Copilot feature. Yeah. So building like these little micro Copilots for sub account or for your entire GHL, everybody gets the same co-pilot. But if you had like high ticket, like somebody that was obviously paying more than 297, be kind of, I mean, you could do it for every 27 if you wanted, but for yeah. your high ticket ones, this would be like a no brainer uh, thing to add to just increase that activation inside of the SaaS sub account. Yeah, exactly. All right, so let's just see, make sure that this is working correctly. So we're showing it under sites. Let's show it a couple other places just so that we have it as a demo. Because I think it's, we just launched that feature where it gets added to specific pages. All right, so here we go. We have our AI, AI tools. And so the idea, I really wish that, yeah, there we go, is that it would get hold up like this, so then they could just choose which one they want, fill it all out, right. and then generate, and they can copy and paste it. And it's just, once you've done it once, it's it's super fast, and it's right there. So, yeah. Yeah, so like and the AGP copy generator, yeah. uh, put that in the settings area, right? So That would be so useful, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway, so, so that's the idea. It's like, you can really just put these anywhere, and we have this fly out thing coming to contact buttons here shortly as well, which would be really cool. Cause like yeah. that just seems a lot more intuitive when you're using a tool like this, I think. No, yeah, no, no, absolutely. And 
another thing to think about now, again, because this is going to get like the pioneers, because we have a lot of pioneer users in the formats community that are just always wanting to, you know, take test the customizer to its limits, test formats to its limits. You yeah. can webhook all this too. So when they use a tool, you can send that into a workflow. So just think oh, of the yeah. there as well, store it into the contacts field. Um, you know, you could, you know, have it be sent to the contact 24 hours later, you know, or, you know, is it, so, 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 or, or build, I've seen someone actually build an entire workflow generator and it's all dynamic. It's all super, it's a dynamic lead nurture is what we call it. Um, so there's that possibility as well. Um, yeah. And I, I, I don't know, Tom, if you want to talk a little bit about, I know we're kind of pressed for time, um, what the future looks like for AI, where, where do you see GHL? with AI and just like the whole sort of sphere of like marketing automation, obviously like Salesforce, I've taken a look at some high-end Salesforce dashboards. They've had this stuff for years, like this, you know, they have the uh, Einstein uh, prompt layer and, 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 and the Einstein layer and the prompt builder inside of Salesforce. Obviously these are very expensive CRMs. I see GHL, I mean, this to be like a natural addition to customizing a GHL. I don't know what you yeah. mean. Well, it really comes down to making the AI specific for the users, right? And where GHL excels is that I feel like it's, I've, I think I coined the term that the GHL is the, the marketing system, oper, marketing operating system. And then right. I heard Stace use it a bunch of times, but it's like the marketing uh, operating system. And so the whole idea is that you're building the workflows that are going to let your users succeed in their business, right? So like you're enabling small businesses to thrive and grow and you're almost like, and I kind of like, I have funny side story. When I was a kid, I had this realization that I wanted to be like, when my mom had asked me, you know, what do you want to be or do when you grow up? And I was like, you know, she was a business consultant. And I was like, you know, I want to be like a business consultant like you are, but I want to use technology. Like I want to be like a communications enabler, business consultant sort of a thing. And I realized that we as GHLers are really kind of doing that, right? We are tech. We're helping businesses that don't know how to use tech to implement tech inside their business. And we're taking all of the tools. We're taking GHL. We're taking FormWise. We're taking the customizer. We're building the SOPs that they need to grow their business. And we're handling the tech side, basically. And that's where, like, there's this niche of people, which we all are, right? That aren't business owners. They aren't, we aren't florists. We aren't plumbers, et cetera. We are technologists and we are serving the community by bringing our solutions and, you know, our genius to how to grow their company using tech. And that's where you can go to like any, uh, you know, local meeting or small business meeting sort of a thing, like a uh, chamber of commerce, stand up there and talk about AI or talk about automation. And you get floods of people coming asking, how can, how can I help get help from you? Right. Mm -hmm. So that's really, you know, where FormWise and all of these tools mm -hmm. really come in. And, and I think that People are going to succeed more and more if they take that mindset of yeah. enabling users and sort of like own the fact that they are geniuses in creating these SOPs for users, et cetera. Yeah, and I got to that, Tom. So on a lot of probably I told Tabri this other day, the past two months, most of the discovery calls that I get on, 80% of them now, people asking now about AI and artificial intelligence. Yeah. Six months ago, not so much. You know, they're yeah. running away from it, scared of it, whatever. Even though they don't even know what it can do now, they're talking about asking about it, asking for it. So now I can take every uh, discovery call, and just like anybody that's watching this should in their agency, is to make sure that people know that your business is powered by AI, just so you can have that conversation. Because now yeah. this is where it comes right into FormWise, the tools you got, Tom, and all the things we're talking about is like, if you're a GHL agency and they might be talking to you, they could be talking to two other ones. We don't know. It's important that you are talking about artificial intelligence and can show them the things that 
they're not even going to have to go somewhere else because I promise you between what we got going on right here inside of these high level, no other, because we know the rest of them out there, right? There's yeah. no other ones that can go to that can top what we're doing. So yeah. that's why it's so important. Anybody that's listening is that, you know, no matter what it is, you've got to get ago, pay in there. The, these services were prohibitively expensive to the small business owner. Mm -hmm. I mean, prohibitively expensive, like, you know, from bots to custom mm -hmm. AI tools to having a customized CRM with your logo, with the customizer and, 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 and a custom, like basically a beast book CRM using the customizer, like again, for prohibitively right. expensive. I've always thought like agencies, specifically GHL agencies are always going to be the conduit to new technologies to deploy the latest cool things, whether it's automation or AI or even sales and strategies, you know, that's always been the case, but like, you know, all these new upheavals, small businesses are nervous. I mean, small business owners are nervous about this, but if you're, especially if you're in a niche and you're the authority of AI in your niche, this is a great way to get, at least get the foot in the door, you know? So yeah. So, yeah, I just yeah. had an idea. I had an idea for, you know, GHLers that are trying to grow their SaaS. Mm -hmm. They should have, they could easily have like an upsell or the free bonus is that you'll have a consultation call where we will build your custom AI prompts mm -hmm. and AI tools to put inside of your CRM, right? Yeah. And this is normally a $500 service where we actually build this thing for you and you know for people that sign up today we're going to have a one-on-one -on -one call where we you know will go through your business processes and build out some ai tools that will complement your business processes and help make this crm unique and etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah you know what's cool is that javier and so already got like a a whole library of tools if, if you want to talk about that hobby to where he's stealing our offer he's telling everybody yeah. our offer. yeah, yeah. there's yeah. already yeah there, <laughs> no. there's already like Probably yeah. any any agency we talk to because I get I get I do a lot of free coaching calls in the community too for high levelers to come to us and when I talk to them and you know show them a little bit of format there's already tools in there that you can go in and go okay I want this these five tools here and put them in a set and then that's what you put in your high level yeah. Javier can explain more about that to everybody but that's kind yeah, of yeah I'd love it if you could show both that and then also the using Formwise as a lead magnet mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So what Sean is talking about is, and this is super easy to do because, because inside of Formize, there's already 140 templates and, you know, us over here at Lead Dragon, we are not in a niche. We are pretty broad. So, you know, we serve all, like from franchises to, uh, you know, coaches, all sorts of businesses. So uh, it's in our best interest to just keep the tools broad um, for us, but we do have some specific franchises uh, which I can't, I can't share their sub account where the toolkit is customized for their brand. It's already in their brand voice. Um, they don't need to enter like in, like in some of these tools, like, let me just do customer avatar. Like, you know, they don't need to enter like their business name and stuff like that. Um, you know, it's already, it's already, um, basically pre-filled in the prompt instructions. So all the tools are already kind of trained on that sub account specifically. Now we're already exploring ways to pull in custom values into the tools, still being whiteboarded. We're not exactly sure how we'll deploy it, but yeah, I mean like this one is when somebody hops on a demo call with Formize and they're like, how can I use this with GHL? The first thing I share is the custom iframe menu. Um, just create a quick toolkit uh, of, a, of Formize tools and then just iframe the thing. Um, you know, you can do that on any plan of Formize and, you know, it's, it's really a no brainer cause you can have like a custom Jasper.ai, you know, every engine is available. We're exploring other non open AI engines as well. So this is just an easy way. Um, number two is let me pull up our agency site and, and I actually have permission. He gave me permission. So I will share it too. I'll, I'll, I'll let that load in the background. Um, this is our agency site. This is just an example of a uh, form wise lead magnet. Um, and of course, this is actually the multi-page view of your tool. You could have a regular tool and then you can also have a multi-step tool, kind of kind of like Typeform. So I'm just going to go through this real quick and just target How audience. How often do you get filling this out, by the way? Uh, say that one more time. Sorry. Sorry, Tom. How often do you get this lead magnet filled yeah, out? Quite often because a lot of people hit this side. This is where we wind uh, up getting the discovery calls like this. Yeah. So this is important that 
you know, that we have people have this option. And once they fill this out, which he's about to do, it, you know, basically has gotten them to try to book a discovery call, but gives them a good, a good list. So this is a, this is just a simple way to, to, uh, and, and it makes it easy for me too when I get them on the call is like, Hey, you know, did you check this out? This is all AI right here. Like we can do the same thing for your site. We can yeah. do the same thing for your, you know, we can do get it, do an internal tool for you. And sometimes, believe it or not, Tom, that's the, that's the nail in the coffin, if you will, when they know that we've got all this AI tools that can be built out for them. And they love cool. Yes. And the email I put it on, on the final step here goes, goes into my sub account and then they get followed up with this and then they get a customized email based on these results. So, so that's what happens there that cause you are able to webhook to a, again, it doesn't have to be GHL, but GHL does have the inbound webhook trigger action. So you mm -hmm. can send the data, both the, what they inputted and, and also the AI response as well. Uh, and any other additional prompts, if you are prompt training your tool, um, you know, all that sent to, to that webhook. Uh, we have a lot of people that also are sending these to Zapier webhooks where, you know, you can send it through GHL there too, but then you also need to send it to Google docs, mm -hmm. to uh, Slack and stuff like that. You're, you're able to connect all sorts of applications there. Um, but that's an example. Here's another example. Um, and again, we love um, Chad and Anthony that run Bulletproof. Again, they have on their website, a tool set. That's just, again, it's just an example of what you can add on your website to kind of uh, AI fire your website for one and kind of give people a preview of what's mm -hmm. inside mm -hmm. of their proprietary uh, CRM. In this case, they're uh, real Sorry, estate. Howie. Let me add there because, you know, I love the sales side of this. So this is important too, Tom, that it's not only showing them what they can use, right? But guess what? There's a lot of people that will come back to his website just to use those tools. They, if they come back enough, guess what's going to happen, right? They're going to be like, I just need to work with these guys. Oh, yeah. So this is perfect. Yeah. Perfect. And they have, I mean, they're so ahead. Um, you know, it's, it's probably why they don't mind me sharing. I mean, they have over 500, you know, AI tools for mm -hmm. real estate agents. They've taken every probably valuable prompt for a real estate agent and wrapped them into tools inside of Formwise. And then now they're, I mean, where are they going to get that? You know? Yeah. Where else are these guys going to get those tools? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, I mean that that's example of the lead magnets. That that's example of the toolkit. Um, and again, you're able to create uh, on the pro plan up to ten different different toolkits. Um, on the uh, agency plan, unlimited. On every plan, you can create unlimited individual tools. As well. So yeah, it's it, it's a all plans are pretty generous. Brilliant. So why don't you show your pricing on your thing, real quick, and then I'll show people some info on our stuff right after absolutely yeah let me let me jump to that right now let me share and how long is your free trial seven days yeah so you can try formize risk-free for seven days no software fees at all um of course, do they have to put in their own api key like open ai api key yes on the pro plan and agency plan you do you okay. are able on the agency plan if you decide to like iframe a tool a tool set to your uh, sub accounts, you can require a open AI API key to your end users. If, you know, if you want to pass on those fees, um, and then you can also do it manually on the back end as well. Uh, you know, if your users don't know how to, uh, open an API yeah. key. um, and then on the creative plan, we give you 1500 AI response credits. Um, uh, you know, here's like the main difference. Uh, the most popular plan is, is the pro plan. Um, mm. most people are, most people stay on the career plan, uh, less than a month and then they quickly upgrade the reason for that is because most people want to have access to the longer context um gpt4 engines because they're creating these yeah. seo tools that write articles and you know feed feed one article in, into the next and so on and so forth write books and stuff like that um they also want the webhook and api uh integrations they want more tool sets um we will soon be able to access the internet through function calling so that's going to be really cool, creating these really cool sales audit tools and, you know, web scraping a URL and stuff like that. That is really exciting. Um, and then if you want to add data sources to your tools to really enhance and enrich the tools data, um, you are able to do that on the pro plan. The creator plan really is, uh, you know, we have probably about 100 people on the creator plan because, again, a lot of people just upgrade. Um, so this is, again, you could really build a tool set here and just keep it 
at 29 a month. Um, and you know, if you're just sort of starting out with a GHO, this is a great way to really enhance your GHO with a custom tool set. Um, yeah. but again, most, most GHO agencies are either on the agency or pro plan. That's amazing. That's very cool. Harvey, tell them about the, the reason for the agency plan about the high level integration. I, yeah. I think a lot of people go to that because of the integration. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The agency plan is the one with the native high level integration. So earlier I was, telling, I was telling you guys to just grab the tool set URL and then iframe it as a custom menu link. Uh, if you're on the agency plan, you can actually sync your agency API um, and pull in all your sub accounts into Formwise. And from Formwise, then you'll be able to click on GHO portal. Um, and then you will be able to deploy the tool sets dynamically to your sub account. So I'll show you what that looks like. Yeah, so this is an example. So I can deploy, you know, I have multiple tool sets here. So I could deploy a specific tool set for that specific sub account. Instead, in, instead of having like a hundred different links. And then we all know that the GHL custom menu link settings, they're a mess. Um, they, they either let you uh, embed it for everybody or one by one. This is a great way to kind of do it per sub account. If I want to make them pay for their own API costs, I can totally do that. And then the other cool thing is they have their uh, unique usage history that you can view and they can come back to as well. That's only available on the agency plan. Uh, gotcha. this is and an that example. also would work with the toolkit as well, with the customizer, where right. you could use that same custom menu link. Because what right. they're doing basically is they're putting the location ID into the custom menu link that you put there. And so on the, their back end, they know which location is loading it and then they know which tool sets to show right. so it would work both with a ghl custom native custom menu link as well as a toolkit custom menu link header button etc because both of those are going to merge the data that they need correctly correct yep yep yeah and uh yeah and that's the main difference i mean there's a few other things here like kind of built built for volume Unlimited tool sets, 10 collaborator accounts. That way you don't have to share a login. Um, mm -hmm. A few enterprise GPT settings that are available in the OpenAI open uh, playground, uh, which aren't available via ChatGPT. Um, you do have access to that as well. Um, and then, yeah, just, just larger data source size limits and user data uploading, stuff like that. Brilliant. Cool. And then I was going to share uh, here what it looks like with the customizer in terms of what would be needed. Uh, so most of what we've been talking about uh, today has to do with the GHL customizer. And so if we're looking at the pricing that we have going on over here, um, the plan that you would need would be the agency plan or the full toolkit member plan. Um, and so those would be the things uh, we don't currently have any major specials going on, um, but you can always send me a DM if to see if there is a discount code uh, currently going on. And yeah, and it's a hundred percent worth it, guys. Like I can't tell you like the things that we've been able to do with the customizer, build sub accounts specifically for like a large client. I mean, that's like our niche. Uh, e even other GHL, we've had other GHL people with their own agency plan cancel GHL. And come over to Lead Dragon, um, you know, just because you know, not just support, but just because we are gonna build something around their infrastructure, around their systems, and yeah. the customizer helps support that goal uh, just a ton. Awesome, thanks, Sean. Did you have uh, anything else you want to add before we? Uh... Yeah, I was just that talk he was just talking about. It's important that anybody that's you know, especially if you have to deal with the sales side of your business. Um, I'm telling you, we already see it. Past two months, eighty percent of the people that are coming to us on discovery calls are asking for AI and what can they use AI for. And yeah. you better know what that means, or you're going to get left behind. Yeah, I totally get it. Well, guys, this was amazing. Thank, Thank you for you. taking the time to share what Formwise can do. Um, I, I think it's an incredible tool, and uh, I actually I think that it's a hidden. It'd be like a hidden superpower for yeah. your app. People Absolutely, that yeah, for sure. All right, guys. Have a great one. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thanks for having us on. Yeah.